Hey y'all, so a lot of you, including my friends, my family, my neighbors, even my neighbor's dogs sometimes, always ask me what is it that I do as a software engineer working in Sentry.io. And always, the moment I reply with what I actually do, I get these blank, expressionless, deeply confused faces. And you know what? I kind of get it. I actually do. What on earth does working on backend features for the Sentry product and working on Sentry's SDKs mean? And so for this time, I decided to do something different. I'm gonna show you rather than tell you. So before I leave you to it, I should probably provide some context here. So in Sentry, either monthly or bi-weekly, I'm not exactly sure, we have this event called Show and Tell where everyone submits a video to demo the features that they've been working on. And so for this video, I wanna show you one of my latest submissions to this Show and Tell. So before I leave you to it, make sure to hit the subscribe button, like and comment for the algorithm and with that being said enjoy hello everyone and welcome back this is part two of the release health saga and so if you're new here and you have no idea what part one was about or if you're not but you just forgot what part one was let me refresh in your memory with a quick clip the python sdk version 1.0 has one major addition which is the auto enabling of the release health feature this means that as one of the sdk adopters your your all your sessions are recorded and you're able to see the percentage of healthy crashed and aired sessions and consequently the release health adoption and so this part two is a continuation of this release health initiative but on the javascript sdk server side to be specific so before I start explaining what I'm going to demo today, I just want to mention one thing that's very important to me. Doing this in Node or in JavaScript after doing it in Python was an absolute delight. It was an absolute cakewalk. JavaScript is by far the best language, best programming language there is. When it comes to release health session modes, we are mainly concerned with two session modes here, either the application mode sessions or the server side or request mode sessions. Application mode sessions are sessions that wrap a process. So for example, if you have, if you're running a CLI application, that would be wrapped in an application mode session. And when it comes to request mode sessions, it is something like having a web application. For example, you would want your sessions to wrap the requests. So you have an idea of the percentage of healthy requests or healthy sessions, crashed requests or crashed sessions, and errored requests or errored sessions. So that being said, let's dive into our demo section of this video. Oops, wait, this was the wrong transition. All right, so I'm gonna start off by demonstrating what the request mode sessions um, look like. So I wrote this express app that has three routes, one that will produce healthy sessions, one will that will produce crash sessions, and another one that will produce uh, error sessions. Just one thing, a requirement to use the request mode sessions is to be using our express request handler, which is used here. All right, so let's let's start this. Okay, so this is running now. And let's create different sessions. Let's say we're gonna go with 100 sessions for healthy. That's done. We're gonna go for, let's say, 200 sessions for aired. And let's go for 300 sessions crashed. All right, so our release name is called foobar at 1.3.5. So let's check that out. Yes, and here it is. All right, so as you can see, we've got 600 total sessions. 300 of them are crashes, which leaves us with um, 200 error sessions and 100 healthy sessions. All right, so if we go into the foobar 1.3.5 version, we can see here the graph. Um, we can see 200 error sessions, 300 crashed sessions, and then we also have 100 healthy sessions. Awesome. So let's go to the next section of our demo, which has to do with application mode sessions, also known as client mode sessions. As you can see here, I've created this node script. So the best part about this is that you don't have to explicitly define a start and end session anywhere. Just by running this script, a session will be captured and will be sent to Sentry. This script obviously will throw an error, but it's caught. So it's gonna be a handled exception, which means an error session. So let's run this. I'm gonna call this foobar at 3.0.0. Let's run our script. All right, and if we go to our sessions, uh, our Sentry dashboard, we see release foobar at 3.0.0. There's one session there. And if we go to the graph, it's there. Aired one session. Let's also create a crashed session here. And so to do that, we're not gonna catch the exception. So it's gonna be unhandled. 
let's run this again. And as you can see, we can have one error and one crashed. Finally, let's demo uh, having a healthy process. So let's remove all of this and just run this. This should result in a healthy application mode session sent to our Sentry dashboard. All right, and healthy. As you can see, there is one healthy session that was just sent. So before I let you go, there's one more thing that I wanna show you. Actually, it's not gonna be me who's showing it. Well, it sort of is. You'll understand in a second. Because I am such a versatile person and an all-rounder, I was able to do something that many people would deem as a scientific miracle. And so in... Yes, so not only was I able to clone myself, but I was also able to clone a chair for my other self to work on. So this is me. Say hi. Hey. All right, so let me explain. This guy works on the web platform SDK team. Sort of. While this guy over there works as part of the workflow team, sort of. And so just to bring this full circle, he's still got something to show you. What I've been recently working on as part of the workflow team was to add pagination to the release detail pages. So what we have currently is that to navigate between one release to the next, we would need to go back to the releases list and then pick a different release, either it's the one before or the one after. But now with the new feature added, we're able to navigate between releases easily just by clicking on older or newer or going to the first ever created release or the last ever created release. So without further ado, let's dive right into it. All right, so the use case is as follows. Let's say you work as part of an organization and someone sends you a link or a URL to a specific release that they're asking you to check out, for example. So let's say this is our link. So we copy that and then we go to our browser and just click on this specific URL. All right, as you can see here, you get directed to, the spe to a specific release, which is 2.0 in this case. And this is just a dummy project that I created. So now you're able to navigate between the releases very easily. So for example, as you can see, this part of the chart, the not so lightly shaded part, is the part of the chart that represents the sessions for this particular re release. And so let's say I navigate to the newer one. As you can see, I'm navigating through new release after new release without having to go back to the uh, releases list page. As you can see, as I click newer, I'm moving more to the right. Now, let's say if I click older, then I move back. Moving back through the releases and you can see that easily through the chart uh, placement. And the last two things are these two specific buttons which do very different things. So the button on the right, the button on the very right takes us to the most recent release as you can see here. And the button on the very left takes us to the oldest release ever created. And this is apparent if you look at this graph as follows. Before I end this video, a shout out to all my team members who helped me finalize the release health uh, for Note. And a shout out to Matei for doing the front end of the, the, of the release pagination. This brings us to the end of this demo and this video. Thanks for watching and thanks for making it so far. If you've got any questions in regards to any of the points that I talked about in this video section, please feel free to reach out to me.